Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, August 20th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. We're still watching our two storms. Uh, this is now a Tropical Depression 14 in the Western Caribbean, and the other one has also been classified as Tropical Depression 13. So these are now tropical cyclones, uh, according to the National Hurricane Center, but they both remain pretty weak for now. Uh, we're going to talk about TD-14 first. Uh, this is the wave we've been tracking through the Central Caribbean, and the thing you'll immediately notice about the satellite loop is the semblance of rotation right in here on the satellite picture. This is again mostly a mid-level rotation that's been a feature of both of these systems in the last couple days of satellite loops. This is not necessarily a surface circulation. If we look at the recon data from the plane that just flew in there a couple hours ago, there's not much of a circulation to be found. You've got your northeast winds here, southeast winds here. Maybe down at the bottom we start to get a little bit of southwest wind, but we really aren't closing off with northwest winds anywhere down here. That was not found. So it's an open question whether this actually has a circulation, which of course is required for it to even be a tropical depression. But the point is here, it's it's kind of on the edge. They're not gonna take away the tropical depression designation, uh, but it is very fragile at the moment. And one of the big reasons for that is the continuing battle with dry air. Although it doesn't necessarily look obvious, there is still dry air within this entire pocket that TD-14 has formed within. And you can kind of tell maybe that there's a, a chunk of thunderstorms that is missing from earlier today and has collapsed before sunset occurred here on the satellite loop. And we're left with only scattered showers in the brightest whites. Uh, at the end of this loop. And this is because uh, this dry air down in the lower atmosphere is continuing to choke these updrafts as they go up, causing them to collapse and have to reform. And you can actually see this on some of the model guidance if you take an area average sounding from the GFS for this evening at 8 p.m. And uh, the bar on the left here, if you just focus on this, yellow indicates rising air, gray indicates descending air, and we see mostly ascent in the middle and upper troposphere with descent beneath. This is a classic signal of collapsing convection with lots of rain and evaporative cooling causing air to descend toward the ocean surface. And this is caused by the presence of just a little bit too much dry air in the lower half of the atmosphere. It doesn't take too much, but uh, the problem with this, if you're a tropical cyclone trying to develop, is that if all of your upward motion is confined above the mid-levels, then the inflow generated at the bottom of that ascent is located at a pretty high level. What you really want is ascent close to the surface so that you can get convergence and inflow near the ocean surface. That's what you need for a tropical cyclone to form and strengthen. We don't really have that here. How you change that is through re-moistening the lower atmosphere. And in some ways, TD-14 is already trying to do this by forming thunderstorms over and over. And although they collapse, they leave moisture behind that can then precondition its envelope to be more conducive for intensification. And on the GFS, at least, this does become more possible if we go through tomorrow evening, where we start to see more ascent throughout the entire depth of the troposphere with all these yellow bars extending right down to the ocean surface because the lower atmosphere has become a little bit more moist. This, as we've spoken about, is likely the point during which development is most favored right here east of the Yucatan Peninsula in this thumbnail. I'll zoom out to the larger picture so you can see that, so that by Saturday here we have TD-14 east of the Yucatan Peninsula, and this is probably the point at which it will have access to the most moisture and the lowest shear. And so we could see an intensifying tropical storm near eastern Mexico here or off of Belize. This gets murky uh, very quickly, though, because we're also dealing with this large upper trough in the Gulf of Mexico. And if TD-14 remains just a little too weak, it's going to start having moisture siphoned off by this mid-level flow to the north. And this is what we call deformation in the flow. And this could uh, take away some of the vorticity and moisture that TD-14 is trying to coalesce for itself. And without that, it could struggle a little bit. This seems to happen on the GFS as this comes into the southern Gulf of Mexico, where it remains weak through Sunday. It's dealing with uh, wind shear from the upper level trough because we'll have southwesterly wind aloft and dry air deposited on the west side of the system by that same trough. And then again, the stringing out of the moisture toward the north. 
Eventually the GFS shows some intensification as the shear lessens a little bit as the trough begins to erode aloft. And although there is still shear, it's much drier on this side than this side, so you can tell there's southerly shear here, there's uh, enough of a slackening of the shear that some deepening occurs. But this has varied a lot from run to run and from model to model, indicating that there's still uncertainty here, and much will depend on how strong TD14 is near its launching point into the Gulf, and how robust that circulation is at that time will likely determine how strong it can remain during its journey across the Gulf. Looking at the European model, this has not been developing TD14 in the last several days, but this morning that did change a little bit where uh, it takes this weak low here and then it does strengthen it just a little bit east of the Yucatan. And like we just mentioned, this is probably key to whether it has a chance to intensify significantly as it moves into the Gulf as a stronger storm will better survive the shear and the flow deformation. And as this comes up into the Gulf, it does intensify quite quickly for a brief time on this model now and on Monday morning it is a strong tropical storm or weak hurricane in the central gulf but shear does pick up again uh, as it nears the gulf coast and we have a weakening storm that nears the northwest gulf coast on the euro but it is a, a big change from yesterday where there was nothing on the model except an open wave here so this is a trend toward perhaps a stronger looking storm, at least some kind of tropical storm with wind and rain impacts that could be nearing the Gulf Coast. Exactly where is still hard to pin down until we see what this looks like near the Yucatan Peninsula, but right now the model consensus is somewhere near Texas or Louisiana, generally following uh, the steering flow of this big ridge to the east and the trough that's digging in over the Gulf right now, combining to direct it northwestward. If we look at the NHC forecast, that's basically what they have here. They have this eventually becoming a tropical storm moving near Honduras, where tropical storm warnings are in effect, including a portion, including a portion of the Nicaraguan coastline. And then we'll eventually have warnings for the Yucatan Peninsula as well, as impacts could begin there on Saturday. And then perhaps this crosses the Yucatan, and that'll be another little wrinkle there, whether or not that disrupts the system a little bit if it moves over land for a brief time. And then out into the Gulf after that, taking a couple of days to transit the Gulf and end up somewhere near Texas or Louisiana by early next week. This is five days from now. Expect possible changes in a forecast like this given that the system is fragile at the moment it's kind of on a knife's edge in terms of whether it will be stronger or weaker in a couple days uh, when it's near the Yucatan and at that point on say Saturday we'll probably be able to answer some more questions about what it will look like in the Gulf at least that's the hope uh, but right now a little too fragile and loose uh, to have a lot of concrete answers beyond uh, the Yucatan Peninsula this weekend. Switching gears back to the main loop, we're going to leave TD14 for now. Uh, going over now to TD13, which has also been classified as a tropical depression by NHC today. And if we take a close-in look here, this remains kind of messy, like it's been for the last couple of days. It's kind of hard to tell on this satellite loop, but the primary low-level center or vorticity maximum is right up here at the end of the loop it's been racing westward for the last few hours this formed underneath some of the deeper convection from earlier and now is rotating around and is located way up here on the north side you note that this is well removed from most of the heavy thunderstorm activity to the south the mid-level center is down here so this is out uh, this is an offset structure with the low level center to the northwest away from the mid-level center to the southeast. And this is again because of some of the northerly shear that's occurring in the mid-levels, where we have east-northeast wind in the mid-levels and east-southeast wind in the low levels. And this is causing this disjointed, tilted structure. And if we look at the recon plane, similar to TD14, we have kind of some messy observations here, and it's not clear whether this actually has a closed circulation. Uh, we can see the strong easterly wind on this north side. The low that I showed you is about here on this particular frame, or where the, the spin is maximized. But south of this, we're not really seeing westerly winds like you'd expect to see, mostly just light flow or even east-southeast flow to the south of this spin maximum. And so this may or may not actually be closed. Uh, we even have hints of maybe a slight 
secondary vorticity maximum down here closer to the mid-level center with a slight pressure minimum and a little bit of a turning of the wind here just a little bit on the southern side and this is an important point to recognize as well that we may still see some changes in how this storm is organized because this still remains a pretty weak low level center and because of how tilted this is we may get more vorticity perturbations underneath the mid-level part that may then rotate up and around while the low level dry vortex moves toward the west. And you can see some very strong southwesterly wind coming into this new thunderstorm complex tonight, indicating that some little areas of spin may rotate up into this convective area, get amplified, and then rotate up to the north, as I just described. And that's something we're going to be watching for to see if that can interact with this original vortex and perhaps coalesce all of this vorticity into something a little bit more organized. Now, as far as the future of this and whether it intensifies, we've kind of expected during the last couple of videos that this will struggle on approach to the Leeward Islands because of the wind shear and dry air that it is dealing with. And so far today, it is continuing to look uh, disorganized for that reason. And we, we can see the evidence of the shear here from this upper level trough to the northwest that is generating a little bit of southerly wind aloft. But again, this is not even the strongest shear. The strongest shear is hidden in the mid-levels because we have east-northeast flow in the mid-levels, east-southeast flow in the low levels. And that is largely to blame for why we have such a disjointed structure as we have right now. This will abate in a couple of days and the question will be what is left of TD13 at that time? Will it be able to take advantage of more favorable conditions to organize better? If we look at some of the model runs that have developed this substantially, for example some of the HWARF runs that we've had, we'll see what uh, what is really going on here. If we look at the HWARF valid for 8 p.m. tonight from the 12s you run this morning, the MSLP in black isobars here shows you where the wave axis is right in here. That's where that little vorticity maximum that we saw on the northwest side is located well away from the mid-level center, which is offset to the southeast. So a tilted structure that is pretty well represented on this model run from the H wharf. What ends up happening is that this sticks around for the next day or so on the model so that we continue to have this surface low offset to the west of the mid-level low. But then eventually the shear lessens a bit and we start to see the mid-level catch up with the low-level center and they begin to stack and get more into sync by early Saturday when this is passing near the northern Leeward Islands. And at this point the storm begins to strengthen on the model. And this continues as it moves north of Puerto Rico, avoids the Hispaniola landmass, and then becomes a hurricane in the Bahamas that strengthens substantially on its way toward Florida. And this is obviously a provocative run, perhaps the most provocative out of all of the model guidance right now. Most models, most models are weaker than this. For example, the GFS, which shows again the disjointed structure here with the low level center well to the northwest of the mid-level center. But the difference from the H-Wharf is that these two fail to align on the GFS. They remain offset from each other as this comes westward. Even as it's near Puerto Rico, the surface wave axis is still offset to the west. And at this point, the track is also a little bit further south, so potential interaction with Hispaniola keeps this weaker. So on the GFS, we actually fail to get a storm here on these recent runs. And while we have a wave moving to the Bahamas, we don't have anything like that H wharf run which, with a strong hurricane. And this illustrates the profound sensitivity to minute details about how TD13 is structured over the next couple of days. We really need to know how it's going to look near and north of Puerto Rico. At that point, that's when the models that strengthen it start to show it getting stronger, and the ones that don't strengthen it show it remaining disjointed. So this is going to be the key part on Friday, Friday night, and maybe early Saturday morning when we'll start to get some more clues as to the future. And then what this means downstream for the Bahamas and Florida and Cuba is going to be important because the conditions environmentally will be quite favorable for any storm that is in the Bahamas at this time. And so if we do have some kind of a robust system, strengthening is likely. And that's why you see runs like the H wharf showing this kind of exploding on its way toward the Bahamas and Florida. So this is going to be a sensitive issue to watch for, but we can't quite answer that question yet. For now, the National Hurricane Center is taking a middle ground between these two extremes, and they're showing gradual intensification into a tropical storm north of Puerto Rico, and then eventually into a hurricane near Florida at days four and five, staying north of the Greater Antilles this whole way. And again, 
We have a wide range of possibilities that are going to depend a lot on what happens during this section of the track right here, Friday and Saturday. And how the storm looks near its closest approach to Puerto Rico, I think, will be the time when we can answer most of the questions about what this will be like two to three days down the line near the Bahamas and Florida and potentially the Gulf of Mexico. This will be something to watch carefully. We don't know for sure whether we're going to have a strong storm here, but you should be prepared for one that's currently what the official forecast says and this is the peak of the hurricane season things can happen quickly so you should always have a plan of action ready to go just in case something happens and approaches on short notice we do have days to watch this and we can see it coming we just don't know how strong it's going to be just yet as far as the islands in the caribbean go expect rainfall that's going to be the primary issue here if this tracks to the north of the islands winds will likely be on the weaker side simply because the strongest winds are on the north side of the track not the south side of the track so mostly a rain issue for the islands at this point is the expectation so that's about it for now long video today because we have two storms both of which could end up uh, affecting multiple land areas here from the Caribbean to the Gulf of Mexico. We will be watching both as both have potential to be strengthening storms here in a couple days. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.